If you want to find the eigenvalues of a matrix, you probably have been told that you need to use this, the characteristic equation. But it turns out that you probably don't need to use it. There's a much easier way to find them. And to show you, first, I need to establish a few things about eigenvalues and matrices. The first is that if you have a diagonal matrix, that is, a matrix that has zeros everywhere except in the left to right diagonal, then all of these numbers are actually the eigenvalues. So if your matrix was diagonal like this, well, you wouldn't be watching this video, you'd be done already. But here's the thing. What you need to know is that any matrix that you have can be written as a diagonal matrix because the, the way you write the matrix depends on the basis vectors that you are using. And there is some set of basis vectors out there that if you use them to write your matrix, it would be diagonal. And those vectors are actually the eigenvectors. And you might be thinking, well, I don't know what the eigenvectors are because I don't know what the eigenvalues are. In short, fine. But here's the thing. You don't need to know what the eigenvalues are. You don't need to know how to write your matrix as a diagonal matrix. All you need to know is that it is possible to do that because of the trace and the determinant. OK, so the trace of a diagonal matrix is just the sum of all the elements in the diagonal. That's it. That, that means the sum of all the eigenvalues. And in fact, well, the trace is always the sum of all the elements in the diagonal, regardless of whether the matrix is diagonal or not. And the determinant is actually where it's way more complex. But for a diagonal matrix, it's actually very easy. It's just the multiplication of all the eigenvalues in the diagonal. But here's the amazing thing. If you write your matrix in another basis, using different uh, basis vectors, the trace and the determinant will never change. They will always be the same. So you know that no matter what, the trace is always the sum of the eigen eigenvalues. And the determinant is always the multiplication of the eigenvalues. OK, and now I'm going to show you how you can use this to find the eigenvalues way more easier than using the characteristic equation. So let's say that you, we have a 2 by 2 matrix like this one. Well, then the trace is just equal to a plus d. And that will be equal to lambda 1, times, uh, uh, lambda 1 plus lambda 2. And then we can calculate the determinant very easily, a times z minus b times c. And this will be equal to lambda 1 times lambda 2. And that's it. Look, we have two, two variables, lambda 1 and lambda 2. And we have two equations. This is solvable. You can always solve this, right? And so you don't need to use the, the characteristic equation. And the great thing is that the characteristic equation would be a polynomial, a squared polynomial. But look, there are no squares here. This is just like a linear things. So we, we switch from having one equation of order two to having two equations of order one, which are much easier to solve. Very nice, right? And you may be thinking, well, but I have a three by three matrix. I and mean, in fact, three by three matrices are very common, at least in physics, because we live in three spatial dimensions. So for example, all the matrices in quantum mechanics that represent momentum are three by three, anyway. So if you have a three by three matrix, well then the trace is equal to, again, well, the sum of all the things in the diagonal, a, a plus f plus l, which is equal to lambda one plus lambda two plus lambda three. And then the determinant of a three by three matrix is, well, way more complex. But I mean, if you know the, the, the patterns, it's actually kind of easy to calculate. Uh, and at any rate, the determinant Calculating the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix is much easier than solving a cubic polynomial, let me tell you. Anyway, so, and you know that this will be equal to lambda 1 times lambda 2 times lambda 3. And you might be thinking, what, look, we have three variables and we have two equations. We cannot solve this. We have one extra degree of freedom. And sure, that's true, but turns out that very often, no, you don't, because many matrices, for example, the, the momentum matrices that I mentioned earlier are traceless. So their trace is always equal to zero. So you automatically know that if the trace is equal to zero, then lambda three is equal to minus lambda one minus lambda two. And so that's one degree of freedom gone. Also something very, very common is if your matrix is not invertible, then the determinant will be equal to zero. And that automatically tells you that one of the eigenvalues is equal to zero. That's, that's another way to get rid of one degree of freedom. And OK, maybe, I don't know what you are doing, but maybe none of this uh, helps you uh, get rid of the third degree of freedom. You have to use the characteristic equation. 
Well, instead of dealing with a cubic polynomial, I mean, you can plug some of these things into the polynomial and hopefully make it easier to solve. I don't know. Uh, at any rate, like, uh, like, let me tell you, like, this is very common, it comes in hand very often. Whatever you are doing, try this out. It might be that uh, it might help you to, to find the eigenvalues of your matrix much easily than if you were using the, the characteristic equation. And in, if your matrix is four by four, or God forbid, five by five or larger, at that point, just put it in Wolfram Alpha. Like, we humans weren't made to do such kinds of calculations. Uh, but for a lot of things that come up in physics, and uh, hopefully math as well, this trick is very useful, I like it, and hopefully it will make your life a little bit easier. At the last moment, I decided to include a worked example, and this is actually how I realized that you could do this. So we have a matrix A, which is diagonal, but in the wrong way. And we have Z, which is some complex number, we have the magnitude of Z, and then we have the complex conjugate of Z. And so let, let's use my trick. Uh, we have the trace of A is equal to zero plus the magnitude of Z, plus zero is equal to the magnitude of Z, which is equal to lambda one plus lambda two plus lambda three. And then we, we have the determinant that if you work it out, you're gonna see that it's equal to Z minus the magnitude of Z times the complex conjugate of Z. And if you work this out, you'll see that this is equal to minus the magnitude of Z to the third. And this is equal to lambda 1 plus, uh, times lambda 2 times lambda 3. And at this point, you might be thinking, oh, but fair, uh, the, the trace is in zero and the determinant is in zero either. So we cannot use that to remove one of the degrees of freedom. How are you going to get rid of the other of the third degree of freedom? With common fucking sense. The only way this can be true, the only solutions that make sense here is if lambda 1 is equal to z, lambda 2 is also equal to z, and lambda 3 is equal to minus z. Those three numbers make these two equations true, so they are the eigenvalues. If you find numbers that satisfy these two things, they are the eigenvalues, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And so, yeah, that's how I learned to do this, and I think it's a pretty neat trick, and so yeah, thanks for watching.